Hello, Modern here. In today's video, I want to show you an exceptionally fun assassin build, combining archery, fast-paced melee combat and occasional spells into one amazing build. A jack of all trades is the best description I can give here. No matter what is before us, we have the right tool for the job. No enemy safe from our blade, arrows or orbital strikes that clip through flaws. This build is immensely satisfying to play, fast-paced, relatively powerful and, well, Tankiness is another story. First, let's have a look at the gameplay. Your bread and butter combo is, you guessed it, everything. We are going to gather a massive arsenal of weapons to unleash on our enemies. Be it elemental blades and axes, short and long bows depending on the range, or spells when we need some AoE burst damage or healing. Pure archers are extremely intensive on resources due to the need for arrows. You craft 50 but you shoot like 300 in one go. Those are painful to craft in bulk and are also used up very quickly. However, the bow has benefits. Faster paced enemies that do not allow you to cast spells or enemies that are too dangerous to approach can be easily kited. And you can use long bows to snipe enemies that are further away. As for the melee combat, we are using a ward alongside a one-handed weapon. Critters are easily cleared with faster strikes, which are also easily animation cancelled with a blink dodge action. Evade strikes further allow for a great hit and run play style, and we are also utilizing jump attacks for AoE damage and to finish off multiple dangerous foes at once. But there is actually more. We also have access to a ton of different spells that we can utilize versus enemies. Toxic flaws, light explosions, meteors and most importantly fireballs are your top choices for a lot of enemies. This build just offers a lot of diversity. Now you might ask yourself, how is this sustainable? Where do you get the mana? Are you chugging mana potions constantly? Well no, because there is a simple ring that enables this type of playstyle. At a cost of 20% mana we get incredible mana regeneration. This allows us to cast spells frequently. Lastly a disclaimer, this build is not very tanky and quite resource heavy. Next let's look at the attributes for this build and how to progress the character. We are going for dexterity early in the game to ensure bows are hitting for as much as possible. Bows are incredibly OP in the early levels and just fall off a little bit in the end game. Next up is constitution to increase our health pool, followed up by intelligence to enable our passive healing. Healing aura is just too convenient to not include it in the build. We are also using intelligence for spell damage, so it's a win-win. Next up is strength to improve our capabilities in melee combat. And to flesh out the build, we will follow up with additional points in constitution in between. This will result in a 10, 10 to 10 to 10 split. We can further boost this through buff food depending on our preferences. As a note, you have 114 points at your disposal to distribute in a scale tree. Next up, let's have a look at our weapons. Starting with the bow. For the bow, you will notice this bow has only 25 power, but the draw speed is much faster than the bows you will find in the early game. It is important that you have a bow with a fast drawing speed in the end game because enemies are really, really fast. Otherwise, you would never get an attack off. However, you will also find long bows in the end game, which have a longer draw speed, have a stamina cost attached to them, but deal a ton more damage. Those are used for sniping or when you know you are going to engage a long range enemy and want to take them out with a few shots. This conserves your ammunition. For the short bow, look for something with as much added physical damage in the form of piercing damage as possible. You will also be able to find fire damage or shroud damage very often. Avoid bows like this one. They have a ton of backstep damage, which is basically useless for us. Next up, we are going to look at two elemental melee weapons, one with ice damage and one with fire damage. Both can be found in golden chests in the end game. I have two farming guides up, both of which will be able to drop those weapons in the chests. We do not want a regular cutting weapon. Elemental weapons out damage those. Next up, our ranged weapon, which is going to be a Shroud Weaver. The Shroud Weaver is the best staff in the game. Of course, we're going to pick this one. I also have a guide up where to find this one. Now, as for the Shroud Weaver, we equip this one in our ranged weapon slot. This has to do with the fact that you can just use a weapon that is in your quick bar without having it equipped. When you switch to a melee weapon, however, and want to cast something, you can do this by using the staff. So you don't have to have this one on the barn. It is also much easier to just press the button, scroll through the spells. For this one, we are only going to use a poison arrow and an iron arrow. We can craft different arrows. I will go over those right in a minute. You can easily craft those arrows at the hunter. They cost a lot of resources. It is really, really tough to sustain those. I wouldn't be surprised if they buff this one eventually to 250 or even 500 arrows per craft because you need like 300 to clear a camp. Which brings me to the special arrows. You will see they cost a ton of resources. Like black powder for 25. 
I know, the exploding arrows are amazing, they, they are amazing, but 5 black powder for 25 arrows, that's insane. I will exclude showcasing and recommending those arrows in this build guide because they are just unobtainable, basically. Also, the exploding arrow is something you unlock at the very end of the game. Basically, you play through the whole game, never seeing an exploding arrow, despite it having been shown in the trailers. So keep that in mind. You are going to shoot regular arrows, not exploding arrows. So substitute this one, we are going to just throw fireballs instead. As for the other arrows, the stun arrow can be good, but it also takes quite a lot of resources for 25. The shroud arrow can be amazing, but I also found this one to be lacking, especially since you're only crafting 25 per craft, so you need a ton of twigs, and twigs you need to farm in the wolf dens. So if you find a wolf den, like for example here at this location, so here's the first spire, right here, at this location, there is a wolf den. You will see a ton of twigs in the wolf den. You can use your pickaxe to mine those twigs and acquire a ton of twigs like this. This is the best way to farm twigs, by the way. After the whole arrows, you also want to use a few grenades for some critters early on. There are explosive critters, so they run at you. They are suicide bombers, so you want to have explosives near you to throw at them. If you hit them otherwise with a bow and arrow or a cast or a fireball, they explode, deal a ton of damage, but they should never reach you. So try to stay back. For the ward, we are going to use the ethereal plane. The block you see here influences the stamina cost, so this one has less stamina cost than this one. This one also has a little bit more parry power. However, this one also features shroud resistance and shroud resistance is actually quite good because there is a few enemies that deal a ton of shroud damage and looks pretty cool to just summon a shield. It fits the character. So I'm going to use the fury plane. The ghost glider is the best glider in the game. You can acquire this one at the temple at the bottom right corner. So climb up the sun temple. There is a chest here. You can loot the glider. Next, a quick look at the rings because we're going to use the ring of endless life. This one can be farmed in golden chests in the starting area. So for example, right here at the top of the tower, there is a chest right here. You can farm this one very easily. If you have the best glider, you can jump from here right to the door entrance here, then walk downstairs for one floor and loot the chest. This ring is quite common. Now, what does 3% lead chance entail? There is a 3% chance that you'd leech all the damage you deal at once. So it's not 3% leech, but a 3% chance to leech 100% of the damage you did. And now the ring of rapacity. This one gives you 20% mana regeneration, but actually it's 20 flat mana region. So if you use a spell, for example, the acid bite, you immediately regenerate your mana. Now, as for the gear, we are going for swag. We are going for a look. And this one looks quite amazing. I think the set fits this character very well. You have a cape, you have the scale mail armor, the hood, the deer stalker hood is our go-to option here. Range critical strike chance and crit damage. Alternatively, you can farm the eagle eye helmet, same stats, just a little bit more physical and magical resistance. I, however, do not like the look of this one, so I'm going with the Deerstalker hood. Afterwards, the Soldier chest plate gives you a ton of health and stamina. Alternatively, you can go with a different chest, which is the Gloom Monarch chest. This one also provides you with 240 health, but 48 mana. I do not think the mana is as useful, but you can farm this one in chests in the region that's above this line. As for how this one looks, Pretty cool, but I prefer the cape. I think this one fits the style a little bit better. Deerstalker gloves, you can craft. They provide you with range damage and a damage multiplier for range damage. This one is not a global damage multiplier, just a range damage multiplier. I tried this one. Then you have the eagle eye trousers, gives you sprint speed. Sprint speed is amazing, has a ton of physical resistance and magical resistance. Those trousers you can farm in the farming spots right here in the sun temple or at the blue chests here in scatterbone. So here's the map. So you can see bottom right corner. And for the spellbinder boots, I found those in a random chest, also in the same area as shown for the gloom chest. So here, here in the temple, here in Brittle Brush. Now how to play this character. With the bow that has a really, really low recharge time, you can shoot, run away, shoot, run away, shoot, run away. You can also animation cancel the jump, but sometimes it staggers and you need to do two shots back to back. You cannot switch off the weapon, so I would highly recommend to not do this and to just roll away with the blink. For the long bow, it's basically the same, just a longer recharge time, shoot an enemy, 
that's further away and this one deals more damage. With this bow I would highly recommend going for ranged enemies or if you're sniping something or if you're in a safe spot and want to shoot something you conserve ammo and deal more damage. Then you have your sword, the ice blade can also be acquired in the sun temple. For this one F1-2-3 combo, same for the light forged axe, can also be acquired in this temple right here. If you notice an enemy is resistant versus fire damage, switch to the ice blade and again switch from the ice blade to the fire blade if the enemy is resistant. Now our bread and butter combo with this one is dodge and then evade. So one, two, three, dodge, evade. You can also double jump and do a ground slam attack. This one has a lot of range, which also deals quite a lot of damage. So this one is also AOE damage around you. So it hits enemies behind you, but you're not invincible while double jumping. So keep that in mind. So you can run to an enemy, stop the sprint, double jump and attack. Then of course you want to parry enemy attacks or block enemy attacks. And lastly, your spells, for your spells specifically, you can only use the spells while using a melee weapon, but it's actually fine because you want to have the melee weapon if something comes close to you, if you need to disrupt the spell and don't need to switch the weapon immediately. For the bow, it's not as important, but for the staff, really important because the cast times are quite long, especially for the more powerful spells. So what you want to do is use the acid carpet versus toxic fat dudes, or if you want to AOE something, it looks like this. So if an enemy stands inside the spawn, they get damaged quite considerably. If you want to attack multiple enemies, use the Shroud Meteor. Here is a little bit of gameplay for this one. It hits all enemies in front of you, deals quite a lot of damage and is actually quite amazing to use. It looks visually stunning, so I like this spell quite a lot. You can find this one in chests in the last zone. For example, in the Sun Temple there is two chests right here and here that you can loot very easily. Those can contain the spell. For enemies with shields, you can use the light burst spell. This one looks, well, decent, but you can jump around and use the spell. So that's quite cool. Then you have the fireball, which is used for flyers. Or if you want to nuke some enemies, has a ton of range, has a ton of damage, and you recharge your mana quite fast. You can actually use two fireballs back to back. The ice bolt will never be used and your healing spell, you can find an eternal version of this one by chopping down some aloe. You will unlock all eternal spells by finding the components listed in the top right corner of this video. Please keep in mind, for some you need the laboratory, so the last crafting station for the alchemist, but every single eternal spell is crafted. So you need to find a component that is missing in the list that you have not acquired and then you can craft the spell. The same is true for the heal channel. I need to craft this one yet. I'm just really lazy. So for this one, you channel this one, some light blobs fly to you and heal you. And you have channel lightning, which is quite amazing versus the flyer enemies, especially the ones with sickles. Lightning damage is very effective versus those. So having this one ready for them is amazing. Next up, let's have a look at the skill tree. We're going to start at the ranger with dexterity, marksman for 10% more damage with our arrows, then sharpshooter for 20% damage, skill shot for another 20% if we hit the head, then we pick up multi shot, multi shot however, so when you're shooting an arrow, you have a chance of 20% to shoot multiple arrows, look at the counter, it takes free, so it is not one for free, but it's free for free, basically draining your ammunition quite fast, so maybe you want to skip this one early on, I would still pick it because you have multiple options to dealing with enemies anyway. Then you pick Ranger for 2 Endurance, 2 Dexterity, Crit Damage, Crit Chance, so a very powerful node, and we switch completely to something else. We want to enable our spells to function, so we pick up Dexterity, Airborne, Updraft, counter strike and then quick charge without quick charge your spells feel absolutely atrocious to use we're going to skip the intelligence for now and then move down here for the merciless attack power parry constitution shiny plates for a little bit of defense evasion attack battle heal so when we critically strike with a melee weapon we heal for five percent of our maximum health then pick up absorb blink emergency blink to have something to get out of stuns then we pick up healer healer 2 intelligence water aura and waters of life this will sustain us throughout the whole game you will be around level 15 maybe around level 14 with this one at this point there is a lot of poisonous enemies and sustain is quite bad on this character you need a lot of health region this will take care of that so pick up the intelligence nodes right around here then pick up the intelligence node here and you're set for the mage part of the class now we are going to dip into the melee side of things however if you do not like 
casting spells, you can dip, skip this part and immediately go into the melee portion of the build. So Constitution, the Warrior's Path, Strength, Slasher, Butcher for 30% slashing damage, Axes and Swords are slashing damage. Then we pick up Veteran for 10% crit and 20% fast attacks with Swift Blades. We want to grab Strength here, Jump Attack, Double Jump, Jump Attack 2, Runner, Endurance and Wanderlust. So this one is for Mobility into Jump Attack. Then we pick up Strength, Heavy Handed in the Barbarian Cluster, Strength, another Constitution point here, Breach and Shockwave. Heavy Handed will fill up the stun bar of enemies 20% faster. If you're using a melee weapon, this occurs quite often, so you want to have this one. Once we break the Breach with a melee weapon, so you can fire at a shield enemy with your bone, fill up the break bar, then dash to them, hit them one time and break it. You will now deal 100% more damage to them with melee attacks and can kill them very easily without wasting ammo. After overpowering an enemy and breaking their stance, they will deal a shockwave. So we also pick this one up. Now we are going to finish the build with constitution, constitution and strength at the warrior cluster. And that's it. We are now sitting at 10 constitution, 10 Strength, 10 Dexterity, 10 Intelligence and 7 Endurance. So an even split. Now we can further optimize this build for a variety of buffs and consumables. First get your comfort up and running to not run out of stamina. Very important on this build. Next consume some juicy meat. Early chunks of wolf meat and later game meat. This will improve your health through constitution. Next up use berries early to get access to health region. Extremely important on this build. Dry them to increase the duration. Always pick the berry bushes. It's very important on this build. Your actual main stat is a bit more flexible. It's your choice depending on what you prefer. If you prefer archery go for dexterity food like tomatoes and bell peppers. For intelligence use mushrooms of any kind. I do not recommend going with mushrooms early. Dexterity is the best choice. You are an archer at the core. And if you want to focus more on the melee side, use strength food, which is obtained through grilled corn and later hazelnuts. Consume some elixirs for a hefty boost to damage, scrolls to increase it even further, which only boosts magic damage, and a variety of other options for light, more stamina, and of course healing through health potions and bandages. Those can be crafted in mass at the alchemist by combining water, berries, and mushrooms. So pick those up whenever you can. The endgame food allows us to utilize all main stats at once. We will boost our strength through the meat wrap, which will also boost our constitution a little bit. Next, we are going to pop an intelligence soup, followed by a stir fry of veggies, for a hefty amount of dexterity. You are an all-rounder after all. Now this sums up the video. If you happen to enjoy it, make sure to drop a like. If you have any questions or remarks, make sure to comment down below. You can also subscribe if you have not already. Make sure to join the channel membership to support me some more and check out my Patreon for the AI art I use in my thumbnails. So see you next time and bye.